Imagine a sleepy farming village with a single rail track crossing its width, located near a gently flowing river. Riverboat captains were so captivated by the beauty and serenity of the area that they purchased property along the river and developed it into farms. The large farms that were scattered along the fertile riverbank provided most of the activity in the small community. Nearby was a picturesque amusement park that likely catered to early tourists from such faraway places as Youngstown and Pittsburgh. The park was enjoying immense popularity in the late 1890s. This was life at the turn of the century in Woodlawn, Pennsylvania. As industrial property available for expansion and development in nearby Pittsburgh was becoming scarce and costly, business leaders began looking elsewhere for land. The Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad, the Ohio River, and the availability of property provided a mix of ingredients that would change the face of Woodlawn forever. In 1907, Jones and Laughlin began the development of a steelmaking facility and a company town. This industrial development brought with it the need for a large workforce that did not exist in Woodlawn. The huge influx of foreign immigrants and their old world culture is the single ingredient that made our community unique. Something as simple as trash removal instructions had to be printed in many different languages. Community spirit was strongly evident in the many organizations that existed. Small businesses began to prosper along with the continued development of the now gigantic steelmaking complex. The success of Jones and Laughlin can be measured by the growth of the plant and community and by the prosperity of its employees. The efforts of company, union, and community came to full realization with the celebration of the Golden Jubilee in 1958. In a little more than half a century, Aliquippa grew from a small farming village to one of the largest steel manufacturing centers in the world. We invite you now to join us on a memorable journey through Aliquippa's proud past. Welcome to Aliquippa. The Jones and Laughlin Steel Corporation served as Aliquippa's largest single employer from the inception of the Aliquippa Works in the early 1900s until the majority of the plant was closed in 1984. This portion of our presentation will hopefully stir pleasant memories of the gigantic plant that once stood along the Ohio River in our community. The blast furnaces as seen from Keel Street in the 50s. The main office building and the safety office in the 20s. These two buildings were part of Aliquippa Park. The main office was the dance hall, and the safety office was a restaurant. A 1922 view looking out from the main office toward McDonald Heights. This early postcard shows the blast furnaces under construction. The blast furnaces were the first major components of the mill to be built. This 1910 photo shows the furnaces the ore yard, and the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie rail yards. Renowned photographer Diarzian captured the majesty of the blast furnaces in this 1964 photo taken high above Logstown. Molten iron was moved by rail from the blast furnaces to the steel making operations in these odd shaped cars that were called submarine ladles. One of the many departments in the plant was the plant protection department. The plant guards provided security and traffic control among their many duties. You should note here the large E for excellence mounted on the main office building. This award was given during the war years for exemplary wartime effort. JNL sponsored a pistol team that was made up of members of the plant protection department. The team is proudly displaying one of their trophies. The tin plate department, or tin mill, manufactured a product that in some way impacted everyone's life. Largely associated with food packaging, the Aliquippa mill was featured in this trade magazine ad showing the inspection process for tin plate. This national ad shows a superimposed photo of a grocery store checkout with the tin line in the background. Do you remember cans can do for the valley in you? The last step in the tin making process was the inspection of each sheet prior to its shipment to the customer. 
The inspectors became known as tin floppers because of the need to flop each sheet of material to inspect both sides. More customers required weather protected coil shipment, pictured here, which ultimately saw the end of the tin floppers. This professional photo shows the three stand mill in the tin plate department. We should mention here that the tin mill is one of the two remaining mills from the original Jones and Laughlin Aliquippa Works. This 1937 picture shows coke being pushed from a coke making oven in the byproducts department. Coke was used by the blast furnaces in the production of iron. Number 59 Open Hearth was one of five such furnaces at Aliquippa in their steel making department. The 44-inch hot strip mill was installed in 1957 to produce a coil steel product to be used in the tin plate, electric weld, and continuous weld pipe mills. An all too familiar landmark was the overhead bridge that permitted access to the plant from Constitution Boulevard. The overhead bridge served the employees of the South Mills departments. This asbestos shoe protector was used by employees that worked in areas of intense heat. This 1937 photo shows the JNL mail course directed by Wilmer Waite, which was one of the many organizations and activities sponsored by JNL. The steel making process is very complex and involved. Many of the occupations required specialized training. One such training class is being conducted here by Jack Harris. After many years of dedicated service, retirement was a very much anticipated occasion. The gentleman receiving the award here reportedly worked for many years in the coal mines, suffering an amputation of one of his legs, only to recover and finish his career at JNL. Many of you will recognize the JNL memorabilia pictured here. At the top is a year-end pay statement from 1932 showing a total earnings of $949.30. Left center is a brass check and right center is an identification badge. On the bottom is a pay envelope that would have contained cash. Note the deduction in red for the Pittsburgh Mercantile Company. JNL operated restaurants in various areas of the plant. These restaurants were operated for the convenience of the employees. China, such as the piece shown here featuring the JNL logo, was used to serve hundreds of meals a day. The Aliquippin Southern Railroad was the in-plant rail line that served every department in the mill. At its peak, the ANS had approximately 90 miles of trackage in the plant, running from the barge landing in the South Mills to the northern property boundary in Manaka. Employment totaled more than 600 employees who operated and maintained some 25 locomotives and literally hundreds of cars. The ANS is still active in the plant serving JNL Structural and LTV's tin mill. The diesel locomotive featured here is typical of the motive power they use today. This January 22, 1937 newspaper article featured a story on the first ANS engineer. His name was James Shirt and he blew the first whistle in 1906. The hotbed gauger in the 14-inch rolling mill is checking the dimensions of angles as they emerge from the mill. The 14-inch mill is now JNL Structural and along with the tin mill is one of two remaining mills in a plant that at one time employed as many as 14,000 men and women. Aliquippa's past is steeped in a proud and rich cultural and ethnic heritage. This heritage is apparent in the influence that the church has had over the ethnic population of our community. This influence helped maintain a strong tie to the culture and traditional makeup of our ancestry. Religion served as the bridge between a people's homeland and their newly adopted home. We will now look back at some of those ethnic and religious traditions that created the Aliquippa melting pot. As early as 1793, we can document the ties of religion in our community. In an area known as White Oak Flats, now New Sheffield, a congregation founded by farmers and tradesmen of German and Scotch-Irish descent formed Mount Carmel Presbyterian Church. 
This church is on record as the oldest in Aliquippa and the third oldest in Beaver County. Several of the founders of this church were veterans of the Revolutionary War, and the first recorded baptisms were on April 7, 1810, administered to Margaret Figley and Margaret Cooper. It is interesting to note here that the first resident pastor had a 1,000-acre plantation along the Ohio River between Shoustown, now Glen Willard, and Phillipsburg, now Manaka. The pastor was Andrew McDonald, and his plantation property would later become the site of J&L and also the area known as McDonald Heights. Prior to construction of the first church building in 1812, services were held in private homes in the area. The church shown here was built in 1871 and stood along Broadhead Road until 1976 when the present church was built. Foundation stones of this building were used to line the parking lot of this new church. In 1895, the Woodlawn Presbyterian Church was established as an offshoot of Mount Carmel Church. The first church building was located on Sheffield Avenue. And in 1898, the Woodlawn Academy was established and located adjacent to the church. This photo shows the congregation in the early 1900s. In 1928, a new church was built on Highland Avenue. St. Elijah's Serbian Orthodox Church was built in 1914 along Hopewell Avenue in Lockstown. This building served the congregation until June 3, 1956, when they moved to their present location on Main Street in New Sheffield. Pictured in this slide are photos of the old and new churches. The ethnic ties to their homeland is evident here in this October 14, 1934 photo that shows the congregation after the memorial service for King Alexander of Yugoslavia who had been assassinated. Father or Proto Tomic was a beloved leader of the Serbian church for many years. The KCC Sveta Petka Circle of Serbian Sisters, pictured here, was and still is one of the most active organizations in the church community. Father Tomic and his wife are in the front row. Strong traditions are evident in the photos of this Serbian wedding. The crowns worn by the bride and groom in this photo symbolize the blessings bestowed on the wedding couple. During the course of this ceremony, the crowns are exchanged to show the equal role each partner has in this union. Also observe that there are no pews in the old church. Everyone stood for the entire length of the service. The first church of God in Christ, or the church in the round, as it is more commonly called, is featured in this slide. The original building shown on top of the photo was built in 1920 and was subsequently replaced by the modern facility on the bottom of the photo. The church in around is a Pentecostal church that was founded by Mother Julia Drake in her home on White Street in 1920. Bishop Melvin Clark, shown here with his parents, has through his service and dedication established several satellite ministries, one of the most popular being, May I Present Jesus to You, Holy Ghost Conference. Full immersion baptism is one of the traditions of the church in around. Shown here is one such baptism in the Ohio River in Glen Willard. The United Methodist Church was founded in our community in 1913. Their first building on Plan 6 was used until 1926 when they moved to a landmark location at the base of the Plan 12 Hill on Franklin Avenue. This grand structure, which no longer exists, served the congregation until 1964 when they moved to their present location on Broadhead Road in Hillcrest. Shown here are photos of each of these buildings. 
St. Joseph's Roman Catholic Church was established in Aliquippa, present-day West Aliquippa, in 1894. The church and rectory are shown in this very early photo. St. Joseph's is still an active parish and functions in this building on Allegheny Avenue in West Aliquippa. St. Joseph's provided up to eight years of parochial education until 1968. The old and new St. George's Byzantine Catholic Church buildings are featured in this slide. The original building was located on Main Avenue in West Aliquippa and was erected in 1916. Fifty years after the consecration of the original building in 1917, the new facility was dedicated and consecrated in 1967 and still serves the congregation on Clinton Street in the Plan 12 section of town. A First Communion class, possibly in the early 20s, at St. George's depicting the traditional attire of the communion celebration. Father Simadeka is featured here with another communion class about 20 years later. Father Simadeka, now a Monsignor, still leads the congregation of St. George's. This celebration of a Slavic holiday in the 20s is an example of the strong ethnic traditions that the people of Aliquippa maintained. Note the native costumes worn by the members of St. George's. A traditional Slavic wedding in the 20s featured a photograph of some of those who attended the wedding ceremony. The original Greek Orthodox Church was built on Kill Street in 1921. Prior to that date, services were held in rented space on Sheffield Avenue. The present Greek Orthodox Church on Davidson Street held its first services on February 28, 1960, and is still active in the community. The Ebenezer African Methodist Episcopal Church was founded in 1924 in the home of Isaac and Ollie Freeman. For several years, different private homes and public buildings were used to conduct services until 1931 when this permanent church was built at 1015 Davis Street. In the late 40s, this group of women served as the church stewardesses. A sampling of the AME congregation in 1949 featuring the founding members of the Freeman family. Pastor Edwards and several members of the church stewardesses are shown in this 1949 photo. Mr. Isaac Freeman was one of the founding members of this Ebenezer AME church with early services being conducted in his home. He was ordained as a minister in 1927. Etta Going was the wife of Reverend Freeman. They pose here in 1940 with their family. Mrs. Etta Freeman is pictured here with her family, the Goings. Mrs. Freeman's mother was Cherokee Indian and her father was French. The Russian Orthodox Church off Sheffield Avenue is featured in this 1920 photo with some of the members of the congregation. Setting the cornerstone for the Mount Olive Baptist Church in the mid-1930s, this building was originally a bakery and was located in Lockstown at the corner of Phillips and Baker Streets. The Roman Catholics of Woodlawn petitioned the bishop for a permanent location to conduct Mass. In 1911, an abandoned Nickelodeon was purchased for that purpose. The day that the bishop sanctioned their request was St. Titus's Holy Day. Thus, the parish became known as St. Titus. This is the 1918 First Communion class of St. Titus in front of Bonnie Camp Hall. In the late teens, Father Graney purchased land between Sheffield and Franklin Avenues for the purpose of constructing a new church facility. The first mass was conducted June 13, 1920. The building contained both church and parochial school. In order to raise the necessary funds to construct this church, 
many fundraising efforts took place. One such effort was this parade on Hopewell Avenue that was conducted by the Lebanese constituents of St. Titus. This early 1950 photo shows the addition of the third floor which was necessary to accommodate the growing student population. The interior of the original church can be seen in this 1955 photo. Further growth in St. Titus Parish caused the need for a larger church facility. Father's Honor presided over the groundbreaking ceremonies for the new church on November 28, 1954. The new church was dedicated November 17, 1956. The front stained glass window is one of the largest in the county, measuring 22 feet by 56 feet. A magnificent panorama of the interior of the new church during the Christmas Midnight Mass in 1956. This is a 1930 photo of Saints Peter and Paul Ukrainian Catholic Church, which was located on Monroe in Plan 11. This May 12, 1935 celebration outside St. Peter and Paul's features a portion of the congregation. The ornate beauty of the interior of St. Peter and Paul's is evident in this view of the altar on Easter Sunday. What can be more special than the First Holy Communion? Again, note the interior beauty. In keeping with her strong ethnic traditions, the Ukrainian community founded the Ukrainian National Ballet. We should note the intricate design of the native costumes. These costumes were all handmade by family members of the ballet. Another way of ensuring the continuation of the ethnic heritage and tradition was to conduct classes in these customs. This June 30th, 1929 photo is of the Polish school which was located on 4th Avenue and Jefferson Street in Plan 11. This is the Polish school in 1923. Please note the native dress on some of the children. The youth of our community have always been active in the Boy Scouts. This 1950 photo is one of the many troops that existed in Aliquippa. Mr. Owens was active in scouting as well as being a teacher in the Aliquippa School District. He is shown here with one of his scouts. The Young Women's Achievement Club, as seen in the late 1940s, was a civic-minded organization that provided scholarships to deserving African Americans in our community. The Moderns Club, featured in this 1940 photo, also provided scholarships to African Americans. Both of these organizations still exist today. The Woodlawn Public School System held its first classes beginning in the fall of 1909. As part of our planned community, a well-defined school system was essential. In those early days, the first classes were held at the Woodlawn Academy building on Sheffield Avenue, the original Lockstown building, which was constructed in 1889, and the Dinsmore private residence on Hopewell Avenue, which accommodated one grade. The building boom, which occurred in private housing and business in Woodlawn, also was reflected in the construction of the public school buildings. The first school building to be erected in the community was the Highland Building. Construction began in 1909, with the first classes being held in 1910. The building contained 10 classrooms and was the first fireproof building in Beaver County. One of the early classes at Highland was photographed on the entry steps. On May 23, 1923, the entire student body posed for a photograph. There were eight elementary grades in the building at that time. Some of the landmarks visible in the background would be the row houses at the corner of Engel Streets 
and Franklin Avenue and the PM building in the distance. Highland was closed in 1976 and sold in 1981. With the rapid growth in the population, it became necessary to continue school building construction quickly. The 1889 vintage Lockstown building was raised and on its site a new eight-room fireproof building was erected. The first classes were held January 5, 1911. There were approximately 250 students and six teachers. These class pictures were from 1939 and 1940. Our last photo of Lockstown shows a class in front of the portable buildings in 1936. The Lockstown building was torn down in 1969. Continued growth and overcrowded conditions resulted in more school construction. Lockton was built in 1917 at a cost of $82,000. This 1936 photo is of one of the Lockton classes. Lockton was sold in 1984. Today it houses the Head Start program for the county. By 1919, the student enrollment had reached the 2000 level, which resulted in the construction of Jones School at a cost of $87,000 in 1919. The addition was added in 1942 and sold in 1980. These class photos were taken during the 1940s. Try to find a familiar face of a classmate or teacher As Woodlawn grew and annexed portions of Hopewell Township in the areas of New Sheffield and Sheffield Terrace, school growth continued with the addition of Spalding in 1923. Were you in Mr. Kamenka's class in 1940 at Spalding? Spalding was sold in 1982 and it serves as a commercial building today. The Spalding portables were built in 1923 and raised in 1972. Woodlawn's neighbor to the north, Aliquippa, West Aliquippa today, had its own school system. The first two-room school was built in 1894 at the corner of Fifth and River Avenues. A six-room addition was made shortly thereafter. As the population grew, the Aliquippa school building was erected. Construction began in 1910, and the first classes were held in 1911. The first class to graduate from Aliquippa had four members and are pictured here. This was the class of 1913. In 1917, Aliquippa High School was discontinued and the high school students were sent to Woodlawn. A second eight-room building, known as the Washington Annex, was added in 1923 and was raised in 1957. The Aliquippa and Washington buildings continued to operate under the direction of the Aliquippa School Board until the merger of Woodlawn and Aliquippa in 1928. From this point forward, these buildings came under the direction of the newly formed Aliquippa School District. Two of the classes at Washington School in 1940 are featured in these photos. In 1930, the Cooper Farm property was acquired by the Aliquippa School District for the purpose of constructing a new elementary school building. New Sheffield Elementary, dedicated May 7, 1931, was designed and constructed so that expansion to the original 10-room building was easily accommodated. A unique feature of this building is the use of Jones and Lockham steel junior I beams as the basic